The power of the sun drives the seasons, transforming our planet. Vast movement of ocean and air currents bring dramatic change through the year. And in a few special places, these seasonal changes create some of the greatest wildlife spectacles on Earth. One of the most awe-inspiring events takes place at Martin Mere Reserve in Lancashire. Martin Mere, a wetland nature reserve managed by the Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust, founded in 1975, is one of Britain's most important wetland habitats. The reserve itself covers over 350 acres and is home to nearly 300 species of birds. The Mere is visited by thousands of migratory wildfowl throughout the year as well as being home to over 1,000 tame birds, many of which are on the endangered list. Martin Mir is a great place for anyone with an interest in nature, and the large hides give great views over the wetland areas. These come into their own in the autumn, when thousands of pink-footed geese and hooper swans return for the winter, along with various raptors and ducks. Autumn winter time is generally um, full of wildfowl, so it's all the big and bold things that you get to see at Martin Mir. Um, especially the hooper swans are our uh, main attraction in winter. We've had record counts today of 1,940 or so. Um, we also get a lot of geese, especially pink-footed geese. We've had another record count of pink-footed geese this year, 36,000 in October. Um, but we also get um, other duck species, such as um, shell duck, widgeon, teal, pintail. Um, so we get a large large range of wildfowl really in the winter months. To us, this outside world seems chilled and far from welcoming, but to many animals in Britain, winter is a land of comfort and plenty and worth a journey of thousands of miles. Hooper swans fly from Iceland in a single bound to escape a winter far worse than ours. They arrive here in autumn, live and feed on our lakes and will not leave again until spring. Hoop swans, all the ones we get are Martin Mayer, they're all from Iceland. Um, and the reason why they're breeding up in Iceland is mainly for um, um, safety reasons, really. There's no real predators up in Iceland, so they're very safe up there. It's very little distant from man as well. So they're very, it's a very safe site for them to um, breed in. But obviously, being so far north, it gets really cold, so there's not that much um, food for them in the winter months. So they have to migrate to somewhere that's um, much warmer for them. Um, might not think it this last week or so, but UK's got a pretty good. Um, weather for migratory birds, as you can see from just looking out there at the moment, there's masses of um, migrants out there, especially wildfowl. And that migration from Iceland's um, around 800 kilometres, 500s over open water, so it's a fairly arduous journey for the birds. Um, but they're making as little time as eight and a half hours. Um, we got two GPS transmitted birds last year that got um, clocked doing that. So they, um, it's a fairly arduous journey for the birds, but they can do it in a fairly, well, amazingly short amount of time, really. We do have a swan called the Wanderer, who's um, the oldest swan at Martin Mayer, if he turns up this year, he's 23, um, who's been picked up in Denmark and places like that, he just seems to go all over the place. Um, not sure why, but um, because normally the very, um, you can tell which birds are going to come back every year, so um, normally they'll just come exactly back, but you always get the odd nutball, don't you? <laughs> Flying anywhere they can.
How do they find their way? Well, some birds use geographical landmarks and some seem to be able to fly by the stars. Because if you release them into the planetarium where the artificial stars have been twisted around, they fly by the way of those. Other birds apparently are sensitive to electromagnetic waves, so that it appears that a bird not only has to have a map of the land and a star chart, but also a compass in its mind. But the fact of the matter is that there is still a great deal we do not know about these birds. There is something almost mesmerising about an incoming flight of hooper swans. Long necks extended, the synchronised wing beats of the family group digging deep into the cold winter air provide an inspiring combination of power and grace, wrapped in a cloak of white. Weighing around 10 kilos with an 8 foot wingspan, it's a spectacular sight as the birds approach the mere, the air rings with their bugling hoop hoop call and the rhythmic swish that vibrates from their powerful wings. The elegant swans make a slow turn before descending down onto the water's surface. This is a true sign that winter has arrived and the hoopers have reclaimed their status as the kings of the mere. <laughs> 